Hello babies, it's Aubrey. I have not made a video talking about my health in a while, um, partially due to my health and me being exhausted and also I've actually gotten really busy lately, but I have a lot of updates, not too many. I have updates, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I am going to be focusing on three main things that are new in my life. One, I have a new diagnosis. Two, I have started seeing doctors at Stanford. I've had two trips so far. And three, I started school. So I'm going to start with the new diagnosis. My new diagnosis is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I'm going to put it on the screen here. Okay, so what is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? It's also called EDS. That's the shorter way to say it. So if you've seen my other videos related to my health, you will know that I have POTS. Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. It took me a really long time to learn how to say that. <laughs> EDS can be a cause of POTS because POTS has many different things that it can be caused by and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome can be one of those things. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS is actually a group of connective tissue disorders. A connective tissue disorder is when the tissue, you know, and your body isn't... I don't have enough collagen, basically. Collagen is one of the building blocks for your body, and when you don't have enough collagen in your body, you it's... there's not enough structure to your bones, your joints, your skin, blood vessels, everything. You just don't have enough structure to your body. And you may be asking me, what does collagen have to do with POTS? How can those two things be related? Well, I mentioned how Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome can also affect your blood vessels. And if your blood vessels are too stretchy, they don't constrict enough and send the blood back up to your heart. Which is why Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome can be a cause of POTS. I would like to note that not everybody with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome has POTS or experiences those type of symptoms. This is one of those things that if you've met one person with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, you've met one person. And keep in mind, there's also several different categories of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And many of the symptoms overlap, but they are different disorders, slightly, you know, and they, they do treat them differently also. But passing out is one thing that can happen with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome for that reason, because the blood vessels don't constrict and push the blood back up to your heart. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome really also explains why I've had so much pain in my life, because dislocations are very, very common among Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and actually one of the main focuses if you have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is to try to avoid injuring yourself, because injuring yourself is very, very unusually easy to do if you have EDS, because you don't have enough structure to your joints. Instead of staying like this, they just like move around and sometimes they pop out of place. And that's how you get dislocations. I just want to show you <laughs> So that's not just my hands and stuff that does that though. It's everything in my body, including my <laughs> my blood vessels. So one more important thing I want to say is EDS can also affect your nerves, which is another reason why EDS can cause dysautonomia because especially in the neck, if your joints are unstable and your vertebrae are unstable there, it's going to put pressure on some of your nerves on your spinal cord and I will randomly not be able to move anything from my waist down if I'm so this does not happen as much anymore because I actually have gotten a lot stronger guys I'm so excited about it but <laughs> yeah so it does not happen as much anymore but I would if I sat too long or in a wrong way I would be paralyzed and it's not the same thing as pins and needles it's like I can't I can't move them like I would have to lift my leg up with my 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 hands 
and push it over and eventually I'd be able to feel them again and move them but but now going on to the second important thing that I have that's been happening recently is I got in with Stanford and I've had two appointments I will be having so the first appointment was I think Feb February 12th I actually missed my first day of of college because um I I was in at Stanford <laughs> but so the first appointment was just to catch my doctor up on everything that's happening and give him a general idea of what he needs to do and so we went and talked to him and he ordered a bunch of tests and then when was the other one I don't remember the second time we went to be honest it was after that though I got I went up there to get an echocardiogram and we could have gotten an echocardiogram here in my area except we wanted we felt more comfortable having them do it because they work closely with my doctor and they're the people at Stanford are kind of the best so we knew for a fact that they wouldn't be missing anything an echocardiogram is basically just an ultrasound of your heart so you know how they do like ultrasounds on pregnant women's bellies to see the baby and you can hear the from the baby's heart that's what they did but instead of my heart and it kind of freaked me out because i was like looking on the screen i'm like i could see my heart on the screen i'm like ooh. but the guy was really nice so he made me feel more comfortable even though i was still <laughs> anxious but i did okay and so that's my second appointment based off of the results of that test i'm going to be going to one of two doctors the point of the echocardiogram is to rule out heart defects or anything similar to that. We're not actually really expecting to find a heart defect, but it's necessary to make sure that that's not anything that's going on because I am having cardiovascular symptoms. So if they do find something abnormal in the ultrasound of my heart or heart echocardiogram, I'm going to go to a... um cardiovascular geneticist if it's normal I'm going to be going to an EDS geneticist so if it's abnormal got a problem with my heart cardiovascular geneticist if it is normal EDS geneticist the other two doctors that I have scheduled with well, well tests I'm going to be doing autonomic autonom autonomic testing which is just testing how my autonomic nervous system is working. And dysautonomia means disorder of the autonomic nervous system. So if you have dysautonomia, it's just kind of standard to do autonomic, autonomic testing for that reason, because dysautonomia and POTS is a problem with your autonomic nervous system. So I'm going to be doing like a tilt, table test so they're going to put me on a table and they're going to strap me in and put attached stuff to me or something and then move me from lying down position into a upright position if you remember I'm orthostatic from my pot so I pass out if I stand up for too long because my heart rate goes crazy so that's what they're testing for and the other doctor I'm going to be seeing is a GI motility mo <laughs> GI motility specialist. So something that happens with dysautonomia is also digestive issues because it is a full body disorder. But um, so something that happens with dysautonomia is instead of your food going from your stomach to the other areas of your digestive system and digesting like normal it just sits in your stomach and doesn't move um it can th the degree to what that can happen can be anywhere from like mild to severe and some they're I, I don't know what they're gonna do yet i haven't seen them but i do know that that happens with dysautonomia so that's why my doctor sent me to that doctor to check out to see if my stomach is working i do also know though that i have 67 percent enzyme function 
which in a healthy person would be a hundred percent. I found that out from my local doctor, actually. So after I get all of those tests done, I'm going to take the results from those tests and take it to my local doctor, who he is amazing. So I do have two doctors right now, the Stanford doctor and my local doctor. My local doctor is going to be the one treating me, and he just needed more specific testing because if you remember, there's only three places in the United States that you can get testing done for for dysautonomia, and Stanford's one of them, and I highly recommend going to Stanford if you have any health problem, actually. I've heard a lot of great things from, like, a ton of different people with different health problems about how great Stanford is, and I agree. So to do a bit of a recap of the testing that I will have done at Stanford or already have done at Stanford is an echocardiogram, it's already been done, one of two geneticists, either an EDS geneticist or a cardiologist geneticist and stomach motility specialist um and autotomic testing so i i have a few more those are actually not the specific tests those are just appointments that i have in the future or yeah <sighs> it's a slow process and it's tiring but it's worth it <laughs> and number three I started school at a community college. I actually graduated high school a year early, so I should be a um, senior in high school. But since I graduated a year early, I'm in college now, and this is my first semester. I'm taking two classes. I'm taking vocal jazz and um, California history, and I really, really like my classes. I'm having a good time so far, and I think that getting out of the house has been really great. For my mental health i still have like problems with it not that i'm working on it and getting out and seeing people and making friends has been a help with that a lot so that's a really positive thing and i also think that i've gotten stronger from doing that because i do get a lot of exercise when i'm at school i still use a wheelchair when i go places that i have to walk a lot so when i'm at school i use a wheelchair and I'm getting muscles. Don't make fun of me about my small muscles, okay? I used to have, like, none. It would, like, drop down like Spongebob. <laughs> so I'm making progress. Don't make fun. And I'm, I have been able to walk more and stuff. I've been using my recumbent bike. So a recumbent bike is just a stationary bike, but instead of, like, this, you're sitting more. And the pedal's, like, in front of you instead. And so I have been getting stronger and I do, I am feeling better. I get cocky sometimes and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm feeling real good today. And then I do too much and I'm like, not good, but <laughs> I've been able to do more. And so things are looking up. I just need to keep focusing on what I need to focus on and trust that my doctors are going to find what they need to do to help me but so new diagnosis Ehlers-Danlos syndrome look it up and then two got in Stanford three school those are the new things in my life and I just want to say thank you for everybody who watches my video I got a lot of nice comments about people telling me that one of my videos in particular helped them and I get like a lot of lot of oh, I'm sorry I've gotten a lot of nice comments on most of my videos too and it, it makes me smile so thank you I just posted a new singing video watch it it's lovely by Billy Eilish is that how you say her name I don't know Okay, well, I'm going to go. I hope you have a great day. And have, have a great week, too. I love you. Bye. <laughs>